Hi, this is John Callies. I'm the uh, engineering manager of Morel Lifters. And we start out, I want to show you our plant is in this square here. It is uh, established in 1991. It's 100,000 square feet. Uh, we have heat treating in-house. There isn't anything that we have to uh, send to the outside. We're real pleased this year. Chase Elliott won the NASCAR championship. We've been with Hendricks for over 14 years. Uh, this is Rick's 13th cup championship, and this is a big deal. We have a little over 300,000 race miles now on our lifters through uh, NASCAR races. Our lifter categories, on the top here, we start with our street hydraulics, and the street hydraulics we build for small block Chevy, big block, Ford, LS, and Chrysler, as well as Oldsmobile Pontiac 409 Chevys. Now this lever is, is, uh, uses a uh, 700 wheel in it, and <clears throat> when you move up, the next is our performance hydraulics, our 4602s. This goes to a 750 wheel down here, 750 diameter. And also the body material is different than our street hydraulic. You're moving up in, in quality and durability. Then we have our high RPM hydraulics. And you'll notice that it has this EDM hole on the front that determines that's the type of lifter it is. And what this allows you to do is you get higher RPM plus a higher spring pressure load carrying capacity. Then we go to the HLT hydraulics, and this is a special limited travel for certain types of racing. Our street mechanical hydraulics, again back to a 700 diameter wheel, and it really is this lifter, and we build a special hourglass piece that goes where the hydraulic piston goes to become solids. Then we move to again to our performance mechanicals. This has been around for quite a while, the 4604s. It's a good durable lifter. And we came out a year ago with our Sportsman Racing, we call it a Sportsman Pro Lifter. And it's cut up on the side so you can go to a low base circle and still have it operate properly. Our Pro Series Mechanicals, we make those in an 842, uh, 875, 903, and 936 diameter. Then we move to our newest part, which is called the Black Mamba Light. Now this axle has no needles in it. It goes, I mean the wheel rides on the axle. This is <clears throat> our black mamba with a DLC coating. The DLC coating reduces friction and uh, is wear durability. This is our top line lifter right here. From here we move to our keyed lifter. This is a black mamba again no needles with a keyed and uh, this is done very well and then you have your cup lifter which has a needle bearing in it. Now, the reason we can't run this is strictly because of the rules in NASCAR. You have to have a bearing. The Black Mamba Lifter, the benefits, one, you have an 842 diameter with a carrying capacity load of a one inch lifter. This axle has an eight, 470 thousandths diameter axle and the matrix material is a B624L. Again, no needle bearings, full pressurized oiling to the lifter and wheel. Wheel runs on an oil wedge. Has a diamond light coating. It's rebuildable. We make it at our plant. Currently available for small block, big block, LS. Also available 903 for small block, big block, and Mopower A and B lifters. This shows the oil flow. So the oil comes in, comes down the lifter from the oil galley, and comes in a V inside the axle, and an oil wedge starts to film. So you have a full film around the axle. This is another view 
where we took the oil, comes down, comes into the axle, down in the V, back up, and starts the uh, oil wedge. Now, what we did here on the key lifter, this has a bushing, and we work with CHE uh, on the design. It means when you put it in the block, it's already finished. You don't have to worry about how it oils. Now, this particular one is small block and big block Chevy, and this is the uh, CHE part number, their phone number, to obtain the part. Similar situation, except it's a different bushing and a little different oiling. You can see the slots off to the side. And this is for the LS and the uh, Ford as well. And of course, we've gone through the oiling. It all works kind of the similar way. And uh, the one thing is, is that the film wedge you sit on is similar to your rod bearings and your engine and main bearings. Now this is the load carrying capacity between a needle bearing and our axle that runs with no needle bearings. One thing I would point it out, if you look, the axle size is a 360 versus our 500 diameter on our Black Mamba. Now the one thing is, is on a needle bearing, at the highest load you only have three needles carrying the load. This is called a Herdian stress point. So you have a small point at the top of the needle and the bottom of the needle, and you have six of them that are carrying the whole load capacity. Whereas now on the Black Mamba, we have a full film wedge on the whole bottom section. So the area is, you know, tenfold bigger. So it means that the load carrying capacity goes way up because the area you're running on the, on the uh, oil. Now one thing there's a misconception on in measuring lifter to bar clearance. And what I want to point out is you must have a vernier caliper on your micrometer. And you must have a bore gauge that reads in tenths. And this is all the points on all our different style of lifters of where you measure to get the diameter of the lifter. Now I'm just going to run through because it's kind of simple. These on the barrel where you have one, two, three, four, five, these are hundred thousandths at each, each point. So we have a hundred thousandths, two hundred, three hundred. The lines in between are twenty-five thousandths each. And then on the barrel these are one thousandths and then when you match up the veneer, you're matching up these lines with what best fits the lines on the barrel. Well, the, the two lines up. So if you take it down here, it's 800 thousandths plus 250 thousandths, 17 thousandths, and two tenths for a total of 8422. Now you've properly measured the lifter. We have a specific installation process, and there is a break-in. We put a special lube between the wheel and the bearing when it's sent to you. We do not want you to wash the lifter, because you'll take that out. And then we want you to run a break-in period of 25 to 30 minutes, varying the RPM from 18 to 2200. After break-in, relash the lifters. The last should not vary more than one Thousands. Do not use any oil restrictors. We want all the oil going to feed the bearing. And on the lifters, we have one circuit that feeds the axle and another circuit that feeds the push rod. We recommend 15 to 17 tenths on the aluminum blocks and 14 to 16 tenths on cast iron block. We want the bore to be two tenths in roundness. Now all this, and you'll see in the uh, demonstration of installing the bushings, boring the bushings, we want a slick finish on the bushing bore because the nicer the finish, the better the oil travels around the lifter. Now I've made up this chart. It's a, called a lifter bore clearance worksheet. You can download it off our website. 
And what you do is you first put in all the lifter diameters here. Once you put those in, they automatically transfer over to the bigger sheet. And as you can see, you've got the customer's name, what he's doing, what type of oil he's running. So you have a good thing to go in the reference of the engine build. Now, <clears throat> once you put that in, you know we're going to shoot for, on this one we can be 14 to 16. So when you have, I don't, the program is not live here. This is a picture. But I could change this that I wanted 0 0.0015 and it automatically changes all the figures to read right. So you know this is what I want as the final bore. And on the engine we're doing here today, it'll be a 0.9373 is what we're shooting for and 15.0015 clearance. Anyway, this is a handy sheet, easy to fill out then you write in the 3,000 figures down. On our website, first thing is to look at Morel products. You can go down and any one of these part numbers, you click on the part number and it shows you the lifter that you're after or you're looking at. Then you have this arrow so you get four pictures of each lifter so you can peruse what lifters, what the applications are. Then we have tech information, and I'd like to point out that on the technical information, if you uh, click the mechanical lifters down here or hydraulic lifters, it gives you the types of hydraulics, what the spring pressures are you should run, what lift rates you should run, so it helps you decide what lifter fits your particular application. We do the same thing for all the mechanical lifters. It's a handy reference guide and it's on our website. You have left hand and offset lifters and this is same deal in the tech area. It tells you how to detect what's a right hand offset and a left hand offset so you can order the right part number when you need it. We have a section on how we want hydraulic lifters to be adjusted and it's a good technical section to read through to help you. If you're interested in any of our products please look on our website. We make from street to the very top performance. I'm sure there's something that would help you. We'd love to talk to you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lake Speed Jr. and welcome back live to the Engine Performance Expo studio. I'm joined with John Callies and Ed Kleber and we've got some questions we're going to dive right into based on this last section about lifters and lifter bore bushings. So kind of fun topic for me anyway. I love the DLC coated lifters. They look cool and they work really well too. So let's jump right in. First question is from Steve. When going to a larger lifter, is a bushing really necessary in an aluminum block. John, what's your thought about that? Uh, no, you can run it directly against the aluminum, but if you're going to use a keyed fixture, mm -hmm. you're screwed. But we do have lifters, bigger lifters, that don't require a key. Got yes. it. So a keyway lifter, you have to have the bushing, right. obviously, to direct it. Uh, without that, though, you can run directly in the material. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, another question from Dwayne. How are you uh, taking the cut on the block facing, taking care of that block facing? on the block facing, I assume he's me means the top of the lifter bore. No, I'm assuming, what I, yeah. What I believe he's talking about, right? No, no, I think the top of the block. The top of the block. block right. Okay, well, the top, the, so the top of the block is done with a CBN insert if you're in cast iron or it's done with a different style of CBN insert if it's a bimetal uh, block. I hope that answers his question. Yeah, all right, here we go. So the next question here uh, was from Bill. When going to a 903 lifter for street use on a big block Chevy iron block, just bore the block and not use bushings? Is the factory block acceptable material for that? Well, usually when you go to a, nine, uh, a 903 lifter, you have a very bigger camshaft. And so you have to be careful about the oiling system working with the lifter. And that's where a bushing will take care of all of that. Now, can you do it? Yes, you can. You just have to be careful of which 
when you look at the parts and make sure it's going to be a correct system? Well, that brings up my own question, actually, based on that. You're talking about a bigger cam, bigger valve springs. Is there kind of a rule of thumb for when you should move to a bushed lifter because of that bushing having better lubricity, better support for that higher load that's generated by either a bigger cam or aggressive profile, bigger valve springs? Well, one thing that it allows you to do is many of the older blocks don't have the lifter bore bushing or the lifter bore in the correct area. Ooh. With a bushing, you can extend that and make a lifter to work in an older bushing on a bigger size. Oh, perfect, great. Um, so Steve, that's a question. When you're doing the bushing, do you finish hone to size? That, that's really neat. The, the machine itself, we bore through to the finished size. We might take out three or four tenths with a different feed or speed, we do not feel that you need the crosshatch marks to get the oil to work properly. Okay. We find the finer the finish, the better the control of oil. So we, we recommend don't spend the time doing anything other than just boring it. Okay, great. Uh, so another question here from Charles. Did they use Loctite when pressing in the bushings? Ed? No, you don't. There is a uh, two thousandths press on the bushings, and so we do not use Loctite typically uh, when you're pressing in the bushings. We will use a lubricant, a, 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 a lubricant to press them in, but no Loctite. Okay. Uh, same guy asked the same que question back to the aluminum block. Could you not cut a key into the lifter, uh, lifter uh, aluminum block uh, body to make a lifter bore? Uh, you can do anything, it's just, <laughs> you know, and we've all done it, but, uh, you know, the proper and easier way is to make a bushing and install it. Got it. And, Got and it. I might add to that, you know, when you're, when, if you were to just put that, that, that uh, brooch, uh, in. brooch in there, you still don't know if your lifter bushings are in the right locations. That's one of the things, uh, especially with factory blocks and all, uh, you'll find that if you were to blueprint the the lifter bore dimensions or positions Locations. they would be out of out of tolerance typically so that's another reason we put bushings in oh, great point so probably enough time for probably one more question uh this is from pat do you recommend straightening the lifters for spread port heads instead of using 180 degree offset intake lifters uh ne you know the we have, once you do, if you do a keyway in an offset, then everything's perfect. When we do a tie bar, we have inspection of the tie bar angle to make sure we're within tolerance to work right, so you don't get a washing machine action during the oh, cycle. Yeah. Great point, great yeah. point. So, okay, John, you need to head over to see <laughs> Joe, because Thank we got a guys. special thing coming up here in a minute. What a day, what a day, what a day. But yeah, my brain, my brain is swollen. I've learned so much today. They told us, don't start cars. We are not going to listen.